Well, the stock in focus is Biocon and remember the stock is by far one of the best performing stocks in 2018 and not only that, Biocon has been able to deliver positive returns for investors in the last three years. Joining us is uh, Kiran uh, Majumdar Shaw, uh, she is the chairperson and MD at uh, Biocon and she will be taking us through how really are the opportunities shaping up for Biocon in the marketplace. Uh, thank you so much ma'am for uh, speaking to Bloomberg Quint and taking out your time. Let me begin by asking you uh, that you have been uh, you know uh, helping investors uh, to stay on and uh, you know they have been uh, rewarded with uh, you know good returns given the strong performance of the company. Uh, moving ahead as the competitiveness increases in the marketplace, uh, how really is Biocon positioning itself in the domestic market as well as in the international markets? Well, as you know, Biocon is a highly differentiated stock in the Indian uh, market and actually uh, investors uh, looking at the Indian opportunity will not find anything quite like the Biocon stock because basically we are the only serious players in biosimilars on a global uh, scale. Uh, so from that point of view, we, are, we believe that, uh, you know, our our uh, you know stock is uniquely placed in the indian uh, market and for indian investors now looking at it globally i think even global investors will find india uh, uh, biocon to be a very very unique stock because as you know there are very few players at this point in time who are playing seriously in biosimilars biocon and mylan together have a very rich portfolio which is beginning to uh, deliver uh, in the marketplace because we have several biosimilars approved and already have entered uh, uh, you, uh, you know the European markets and very soon the US markets and like I said you know uh, the kind of products that we have basically brought to bear and you know got approval for are very high ticket biosimilars such as Pegfil Grastem such as biosimilar Trastuzumab uh, in the future, Bevacizumab and of course the insulin pro portfolio of Glargine, Aspart and the like. So, I think we have a very large portfolio of opportunities. If you know what's happening in the biosimilars arena, uh, almost 30 billion dollars are uh, up for grabs in the next five years. And if you look at the, the fact that 70 billion dollars of biosimilars are going off patent over the next 10 years, then I think you can see the kind of opportunities we are addressing. And I think we are very well poised because biosimilars, unlike generics, is a very, very complex uh, sector to play in. It's about understanding the complexities of developing such molecules and, uh, you know, basically uh, developing clinical strategies to get them into the market in the most cost effective way. Uh, good to know that ma'am and uh, you know as you were mentioning uh, your partnership with Melan has uh, really worked well. Uh, moving ahead in 2019, uh, the calendar year, can we uh, see more product launches, more uh, products in the pipeline that you have being launched in similar model? Well as you know we have received uh, <clears throat> European approval both for Trastuzumab and Pegfil Grastim and uh, you know we've already been approved for insulin glargine in, in Europe so I think okay. Europe is definitely going to be an important market for us in 2019 and then of course we also expect US markets to open up for us in 2019 where we already are in the US market with Pegfil Grastem with a pretty good start. Um, yes, competition will build up, but I think we have an early mover advantage and I think both Mylan and Biocon are in it for the long haul and we are there to compete and make sure that we become uh, dominant players in biosimilars in the years ahead. Okay. And ma'am, uh, you know, when we talk about the domestic business, uh, you know, you have been facing some headwinds. The growth as, is not as strong as your international operations. Uh, so, you know, despite the restructuring efforts that you have initiated, uh, so what can we expect, uh, you know, from uh, Biocon for the domestic business? And uh, do you plan to hive off the domestic business in the future? I think we will stay with the domestic business because I think it's important to build a brand in your own home market. But we do not want to play a commoditizing game and that's where the headwinds are in the country. But I think things will normalize over time because I think the kind of, uh, you know, sort of uh, competitive uh, 
environment that there is in this country is simply not sustainable in the long term. I think these companies are playing for the short term. I think they are not looking at global opportunities. And yes, I think their investments for developing assets just for the Indian market is going to be much smaller than what we have for global markets. So we will see how to sort of, sort of strategize. At this point in time, we want to basically maximize our return. So we don't want to compete in a highly discounted market like India for the time being. Maybe the time will come when we will actually decide how we want to play better in this market. But for the time being, we will stay in this market because we know we have a very good product pipeline. We know that in the Indian market will start appreciating uh, our pipeline in the coming years. And we will, you know, you know sort of uh, develop and build on this uh, market opportunity in a very judicious way. I don't think we want to play a bloodbath game uh, in, in the Indian market for now. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, two, three things which are happening on the international front. Uh, number one is the opportunity that a lot of pharma companies are seeing because of the supply disruption in China. Of course, they have their own pollution issues and, uh, you know, other quality issues. Uh, do you find, uh, you know, some opportunity given the fact that uh, there have been some supply constraints uh, from China when it comes to the raw materials required for the pharma industry? And secondly, uh, you know, uh, is there any impact that Biocon sees because of the U.S. sanctions on Iran and the business there? Um, I think Biocon has, you know, basically understood the supply chain aspects of this business. And I think as a company, we have basically made sure that we are vertically integrated. So the kind of disruptions other companies are facing is not to that extent in Biocon. Um, yes, we do import a few uh, intermediates uh, from China, but I think we also have our own in-house capabilities and the production that uh, can you know take care of these kind of disruptions um, in terms of uh, sanctions I think uh, you know uh, our key markets really remain Europe Europe and US and some the developing world markets for our API's and many of our uh, generic drugs so at this point in time I think uh, the sanctions don't impact us but uh, I would say that uh, ROW markets and emerging markets are extremely important for even the biologics and biosimilars business, where I think uh, Biocon and Mylan are making big strides. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you know, we have seen your strong performance in the biosimilar space and, you know, a lot of investors and analysts do want to know that, is there any plan to list that business uh, separately in the near future? Uh, if you could uh, share your comments on this. Yeah, there is a plan basically to list this entity uh, in the near future uh, and I think we will decide on the timing based on uh, the need for capital raise because you know as you know we are developing a pipeline of assets, uh, we also um, have uh, you know a, a need for capital raise in terms of our own marketing spends in the future. Uh, so a lot will depend on how quickly we want to address certain market opportunities. At this point in time, obviously, we have uh, enough cap, you know, sort of uh, internal accruals to support what we are doing. Mm -hmm. But I think in the near future, we will go to the capital markets to unlock value and to, uh, you know, pursue some of our development programs at a faster pace. Uh, Ma'am, uh, given the fact that you have been spending uh, aggressively on uh, research and development and uh, more importantly on capital expenditure, uh, you know, by when can, uh, uh, you know, uh, investors uh, expect uh, Biocon to turn uh, free cash flow positive? You know, if you look at the way we've gone about our return on uh, capital, I think it's very impressive to note that even our investment in Malaysia has broken even and we expect it to turn positive in the near future. Similarly, I think the kind of capital investments we are making in R&D obviously hinge on the approval timelines and we believe products like trastuzumab, bevacizumab, uh, Semgli and others uh, will make sure that we become uh, positive uh, very soon. And I think it's all about really sort of uh, unlocking value in these big, big opportunities that we see ahead. And as you can see, even the US today is focusing a lot stronger on biosimilars because it impacts uh, healthcare in a big way. It is estimated that uh, over the next 10 years, 
uh, over a period of 10 years, that is 2014 to 2024, uh, the U.S. healthcare system will benefit from cost savings of $250 billion mm. by embracing biosimilars. So these are very important uh, developments which I think Biocon and Mylan can take advantage of. Okay. And ma'am, uh, you know, uh, my final question on uh, U.S. markets, uh, uh, of course, you have been getting a lot of approvals there, but uh, again, on the other hand, we have competition coming in from companies like, uh, you know, Teva and so on and so forth for your products. Uh, so in terms of the pricing environment in the U.S., uh, your uh, profitability in the U.S. markets, uh, how do you see uh, the coming year shaping up? Well, obviously, Mylan and Biocon are extremely, uh, you know, uh, prepared for, uh, you know, discounting from competition. Uh, actually, if you look at it, most of the discounting has come from, you know, the innovator companies who are in desperation trying to uh, drop prices to keep biosimilars out. But I don't think that can be sustained for much longer. So I think the kind of competition we see is really from the other biosimilar players. And we expect that because it's not such a crowded market, we expect that there is space for everyone to play in. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for uh, speaking to Bloomberg Quint and taking out your time. We wish you all the best for uh, the new calendar year 2019. Thank you. And wish you also a very, very happy and rewarding 2019. Yeah. And fourth straight years of gains for investors. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.